Madison Pruitt Trout, it is so exciting to be with you today. I have been following you since you were on The Bachelor, <laughs> and I have just loved seeing how God is just elevating your platform, the way you are sharing just um, your faith, just leaning on Him, how He is guiding your life. Most recently in this new book, The Love Everybody Wants, a book I wish I had had when I was single <laughs> and dating. It is so good. So I just first want to ask you, what inspired you to write this book? So thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here and um, just be with you in person. And I started writing this book, Single and Miserable. <laughs> Thought about calling the book Single and Miserable. <laughs> My publishers didn't love that. No, I'm just kidding. No, I started writing it single and really as therapy to myself, as encouragement to myself, to remind myself of God's truth and promises when I felt frustrated watching everyone else get the love that I wanted, watching everyone else get married and have the kids and have the home. And I was struggling in singleness and just lacking contentment. And I remember having this moment with the Lord and praying and I was frustrated and he just, he whispered to my heart and just said, Maddie, you were looking for all the right things just in all the wrong places. You're trying to find this divinity and humanity and it can only be found in me. This endless, unconditional love first has to start here. And that really changed my perspective on life, on singleness, on the season God had me in. And that was what really started this book. And then along the writing process, I actually met my husband Grant and then finished the manuscript two months married. Wow. So I really got to speak really from a perspective of single and struggling, single and thriving, dating and evaluating, and then all the way up until married. Yeah, and I think no matter what age you are, dating uh, as a Christian is very difficult. I mean, yes. dating, <laughs> trying to hold biblical beliefs is very yeah. countercultural. A lot of people you're dating don't understand it. So my question is, what advice do you have just for the, the single Christians who are just really yeah. struggling right now in yeah. the dating scene? Well, and this book was really the inspiration even more so behind it is Matthew 22, 36 through 40. And it's the two greatest commandments. We've probably heard it many of times, you know, growing up in church and from people, but it spoke to me in a new way. And it's what I really used as um, the foundation of this book. And it starts with loving God. It says in those verses to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And then it goes on to say, and love your neighbor as yourself. And so I take those three loves and not only the importance importance of those loves, but the importance of the order of those loves. And so it starts with God. It starts with God. You can't miss that. You can't try and find it in someone else, in something else. It has to start there. And then it goes to we can't love other people if we don't love ourselves. If we don't see ourselves the way that God sees us, if we don't know our true worth and value in Christ, we're going to be trying to find that in someone else. We're going to look for someone else to complete us. We're going to look for someone else to satisfy us. And so I really take that order. And then lastly, of course, you know, how to have strong relationships with other people, whether that be friendships, romantic relationships. And so I, I go through those orders because for me in the past, in my past relationships, you know, before I met my husband, you know, dating people who I knew I shouldn't have been dating, you know, struggling in the waiting seasons, um, struggling with purity. I mean, just so many things that, like you said, even as strong Christians, you know, dating is hard. And uh, and I wanted to write from that vantage point. Um, and so, yeah, just, I mean, I talk all about it in the book. I have a whole chapter just on dating, how you can date well, how you can date on purpose. And three things I talk about is dating prayerfully, making sure that it is, you're constantly covering it in prayer, that you're going before God and you're saying, Lord, not just what do I feel, but is this your will? Is this your very best for my life? Am I walking in step and being led by your peace? Um, second is dating purposefully. Like, what is your what is your aim? What is y'all what are y'all headed towards? You know, for me, I didn't want to just date to date. I wanted to date with the end goal being marriage. And then lastly, dating in purity. You know, making sure that Jesus stays the center and the foundation of the relationship. And you know, Matthew five eight says, "Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God." I wanted to have a relationship that helped me see God. God more, not helped me or not hindered my relationship with God. And, um, and so that was super, super important to me that I pray and hope that as people read this book, they're challenged in the same way. Yeah. And I mean, my siblings used to always make fun of me and say that I used to evangel date. It never worked <laughs> out. It sounds like you had some experience with yes. that too. Yes. But I want to ask you, I love how you met your husband while writing this. And I just want to ask, what felt different about that relationship? 
I had never in my life met someone who had the joy that he had, the joy of the Lord. I mean, it was radiating from him as he talked about how God had radically saved him. He has a little bit of a, of a crazy story and just the way God had moved in his life as he shared it with such joy and passion and conviction and just the way he was even intentional with the people that would pass by or the waiter and just engaged with people and loved people so well. I was like, there's something different about you that I've never seen in someone before. And really overall, just God's peace. I felt God's peace in it from the beginning before we even went on our date. I had covered it and saturated it in prayer and then even just being there on the date, I just felt God's peace so in it. And I left there and called my mom and I was like, I'm gonna marry this guy. I know he's the one. Um, and I just, yeah, I felt it from the beginning. Oh, I love that. And in addition to preparing for this book launch, you also recently were a part of an event, Unite Auburn, which just turned into this incredible, spontaneous mass baptism event, <laughs> which I, I just was watching you know, on Instagram from afar and blown away. So while I have you here, I would just love if you could just tell us a little bit about the event and what happened that night. I mean, I think we're all still blown away and just asking God, what what do you want to do with this? And we feel like it's going to keep going. Um, but it was unbelievable. It was really amazing being back on, you know, my campus, like where I went to school and just the prayers that I prayed and the way that that university had shaped my relationship with Jesus and being able to come back there and be a part of you know, what felt like a revival taking place and people just encountering Jesus. I mean, college students who maybe don't even go to church, you know, coming to an arena. I don't know what they were expecting to get, but they got Jesus <laughs> and they showed up and we worshiped together. I mean, JP and Jenny Allen just taught the word of God and left there and spontaneously, no one had planned it, but Jenny filled with the Holy Spirit just showed up and said, we're going to go get baptized. If any of you want to get baptized, follow us. And we found a barn where there was a pond in front and thousands of college students just gathered around and hundreds ended up getting baptized. And it was just so amazing. And so many coming, you know, to us saying, hey, I just want to be clean. I just want to be pure. And so many rededicating their life, dedicating their life and just saying, hey, I don't want to follow the world's way anymore. Like I want to go all in with Jesus. And it was, it was an amazing, amazing moment. Wow. I mean, I went to a, a secular college too, and I just, I can't ever fathom anything like that happening. But we're hearing stuff like this. Yeah. It's happening more and more frequently Absolutely. all over the country. What do you think God is doing in Gen Z? He's pouring out a spirit. Like it talks about, you know, in scripture and we're seeing, I mean, I believe we're, we're living in, you know, the end times and you're seeing his spirit be poured out and, you know, people coming to, to see God for the first time in a new light that's beyond religion, beyond tradition and say, man, I want, I want this God who, who radically saves and transforms. And it's just, it's so cool to see, especially because this younger generation, I feel like is such a feelings generation and uh, you're, you're just seeing even like the spirit being poured out in new and fresh ways and just the way that it's prompting, you know, this younger generation through even social media to get on and, and talk about and, you know, and, and just proclaim the name of Jesus in such a bold way. And it's amazing. Yeah. And just from being there, seeing, you know, groups of fraternity brothers go into the lake together and be baptized. I just want to ask you, is this transformation real? And how can the body of Christ be discipling yeah. and supporting these yeah. new believers. Yeah. So the the heartbeat of this event was to yes, for you guys to have a moment and be filled with the Spirit, but not for it to stop there, but for everyone who came to the event to get plugged into a local church and to be discipled. Um, I do think that's where, you know, our relationship with God really does become so real and um, just consistent. Because I know for me, I grew up in a church. I had a relationship with God from a young age. I went to conferences and events and, you know, had encounters with, with God, but it wasn't until I got involved in my church, got plugged into a small group and started getting to discipled by mentors and women and having accountability in my life. And, you know, I, I even, you know, talk about that in my book and share about it when I get to speak because I believe in the power of confession and repentance and having accountability and having people that can hold us accountable, whether it's we're pursuing purity, whether it's even just to be in a consistent relationship with God. Um, and so I think that is so important, discipleship, having people around you. Madison, thank you so much for being here. And I'm just so excited to see how God continues to use you through this book, through your speaking, just in all the ways. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me.